Hi there, Michael from Hotel Rescue again. And today's content that I wanna be talking to you about is four reasons why you may or may not be doing a little bit tough. And specifically, this content is aimed at the smaller, independent, regional operator, because I, I guess in my travels, I'm seeing some trends that are appearing, particularly in that regional sense, where hoteliers or, or moteliers, whatever you may be, uh, I guess not keeping up with their city counterparts. So I really wanna to aim today's content at you guys, the regional operators. So I've, I've identified four reasons, four key areas that I think there's a, a little bit of a lag on that you can certainly make some inroads into maximizing the potential of your business if you just focus on these areas for now, because these are the areas where I'm seeing some lag, okay? And we know that you know, in your space that the, the competition is fierce. No matter where you are, regional or metro, the competition is fierce. So you know, aside from the fact that you may have local competitors entering your market, the competition you know, outside of increasing room stock is, is fierce also in the sense that there's this digital space that's happening and all the OTA activity and the likes that it is really tough to, to try and keep your foothold in the game. I'm, I'm sure you're experiencing that. So these four reasons I hope will deliver some insight and some valuable tips as to, to some areas that you, you should be able to focus on going forward. So let's get into it. Four reasons why you may be doing it a little bit tough in regional hospitality. Number one, first of all, is basically talking about the growth of the service department industry. So the service department industry, we've seen grow from, back in 2011, it had an equal foothold with the, the motel sector. So each sector, motels and apartments, had 26% market share. But since that time, we've actually seen the rapid growth, and I'm sure you've seen it too, of this different style of room stock. Service departments where guests get to, um, I guess, have more space. They have kitchen facilities. And the, all these additional, I guess, physical features that they're receiving in a property are enticing them away from the traditional motel or hotel room stock. And so it's important that we recognize that this is a trend that's happening. And you've probably seen, and perhaps even yourself, you've maybe started to adjust your room stock. So it's actually got more facility in it. But this is, it's definitely a trend that's happening. And I guess the insight out of this is not just the fact that, well, yeah, we understand there's more service departments out there now, but we've got to understand what's happening in the consumer's mind. And at the end of the day, really, the consumer just wants more. So, you know, they want more bang for their buck. They want to pay about the same money, maybe a little bit more, to get more facility. But the interesting thing for me is that they're also willing to give up some things if it helps to keep that price down. So while, while there's an inclination towards, I want more out of my guest stay, they're also prepared to give up some of the other features. Now, here's the interesting thing, is that even though you get more, even though you get a fully serviced kitchen in your apartment, Many people stay in a service department and don't even use it. But that's not the point. The point is that they book the service department because it offers them more. However, what we need to understand in the, in the motel hotel game is that if your room stock isn't service department orientated and offering more space or more facility, how can you start to compete with that? And really, one of your mechanisms is price, of course, um, and this is, this is where the service department sector is competing very well in the sense that they will give up, well, sorry, when I say they, the consumer, the guest, is happy to give up things like daily cleaning of the apartment, daily servicing of the rooms, so they get more facility for a similar price. So is that an avenue for a motel or a hotel owner to say, well, hang on, maybe we design a, pr a package for our guests that doesn't include daily servicing of the room and it gives them a lower price and helps us compete against the serviced apartment sector. So that's, that's um, one of the trends we're certainly seeing. More and more service department room stock coming onto the market. How can you as a, as a motel or hotel owner actually start to compete in that space? And you need to start to think a bit differently and think about what's happening in the, in the consumer's mind. Reason number two of uh, what, uh, what I'm seeing 
This is a, a trend. It's purely just recognised, you know, what, what I'm seeing. This is not scientifically proven or anything. But I, I called it dumbed down customer service. I think in regional hospitality, because you're often wearing many hats, you know, anything from, from front desk operations to sales to finance to housekeeping and maintenance, you're wearing many, many hats and you are very busy. We understand that at Hotel Rescue. The thing gets forgotten is that the basics of hospitality are left behind because you get so busy, because you're wearing so many hats we drop the ball on customer service. So I just think that um, it's a timely reminder that we are in the hospitality industry and that regardless of how busy you are, your most important role is to be hospitable. So don't, let, don't let's drop the ball on customer service. And you've got to think of this in, I guess, from the perspective of the guests. You know, if you're in regional hospitality, regional accommodation business, your guests are coming typically from the metro areas. And so their expectations from what they get to see and experience in the metro areas and around the world is at a higher level of customer service. And so we should try and translate that out into the regional space so it meets their expectations. So let's not drop the ball on customer service. And I think it's a, a key thing, just a, a timely reminder to say, yes, we're in the hospitality industry and I have to keep delivering good quality customer service to my guests. The third area, which I want to cover, is what, I, what I've just called a digital lag. I'm seeing a big lag in, from, from some hotels are doing it well, some not so well, but certainly from, from city to country, I'm seeing a big difference in the uptake of technology. And so, yeah, sure, you, you may have uh, established yourself with a website, you may have even got things like the booking button or got yourself on TripAdvisor and the likes. But my challenge to you today is what's your next step in the digital space? Because here's the important fact. It's been proven that 85% of all travel booking is done online. That is your shop front now. You have to be present in as many places as possible, as many as you, you can manage and, and easily manage your, your room stock and your rates out there in the online world. Your online visibility is critical. And I just, I just want to get you to take that next step and always have, a, always have a digital project underway. What's my next digital improvement that I can do? What should I be doing? Whether it's enhancing your appearance within Google, have you looked at pay-per-click? What are you doing with the OTAs? What's your distribution model? How about your, re your reviews? Uh, are they being, you know, I guess, occurring digitally? And are you responding to them digitally? And is it helping improve your rankings on, across all the third-party sites? So just make sure you're continually improving yourself in the digital space because I, I, I guarantee you, many of your competitors are, and it is giving them a distinct advantage from, to, to, for booking rooms in their motel or hotel as, a, as opposed to yours. So don't let digital lag be a reality in your business. And the final one, which I think is a, a massive opportunity, is what I call static pricing. Well, static pricing is, is the issue. This is the trend I'm seeing. And if I relate back to, I guess, my time when I used to work at, at Ridges Hotels and Resorts, this is the thing that really amazed me. I, I worked in a, in a metropolitan hotel and I, I'm actually a country boy at heart. And I moved back out to the country. And having, having left Ridges and coming back out here, the, the one thing I really noticed was the, the static pricing of regional hotels and motels. So when I say static, what I'm saying is you have a, a fixed price for your room stock, rain, hail or shine. So no matter what day of the week, no matter what time of the year, it is the same price. And I, I get now why that happens. Typically, it's, it's just through an ease of management. Because as I mentioned earlier, you're wearing many hats and you're very busy. To be starting to play with your rates and, and, and fluctuating things seems just like another job that you've got to do. 
But you know, under the guise of what hotel rescue is all about, which is maximizing potential, this is the game changer for me. This is the, the one thing that can add money straight to your bottom line if you get it right. You have to learn to play the market. It may just be in a very simple sense, it can be done very simply, or it can be done very complicated. Um, there is many software programs out there that uh, have the promise of the automation of, uh, of your rates and, and the distribution, and that's fine. We need to partner with some technology, but you also need to understand it yourself. You need to have the smarts in you to go, what's the right price to be putting in my rooms at this point in time? Because you have a perishable stock item. It is highly impacted by supply and demand. And you know you, you have the right to charge more when it's in demand. And you also have the flexibility to drop the price, price, pardon me, you also have the flexibility to drop the price should the market be a little soft. And so it's in this space where you can be adding profits to your bottom line. And I really encourage you to look, look into that. So there are the four areas. The growth of the service department sector and how we can understand the consumer buying patterns and trying to, to drill in there and retain some of that market share that you're potentially losing at the moment. Customer service, let's not forget that that's at the core of what we do. Digital lag, always have a project to be working on to try and improve your, your digital footprint and your online visibility because this, this piece will continually be changing. You have to have a program to keep up. And static pricing, moving towards a dynamic pricing structure of some capacity, starting to play with the market a little bit and take advantage of those profit opportunities. They're the four areas where I, I think there is some lag from the city to the regional um, uh, accommodation businesses. And I think there's a, therefore the biggest opportunity for growth and improvement. And really what, what that means is you know, you may be sitting there going, yeah, look, that's fine. And, and I really resonate with what you said earlier about, you know, I wear many hats and I'm so busy. But I just think you work so hard. You work seven days a week, typically. And even if you don't work seven days a week, I'm sure you work sort of 10, 11 plus hour days if, if you're on a, on a, say, a five day a week schedule. I know the hospitality game. You work hard, you work long hours, and you deserve to be rewarded. And I, you know, these by, by starting to put some actions into place around these four areas, you know, you're going to get some reward now. So it's about trying to maximise the revenue and profit opportunity here and now, so you can get the performance and enjoy the fruits of your efforts now. But equally, I'm assuming one day you may want to retire and actually sell or move on from your, your the, the current industry that you're in, and to do that. The only way to maximize the, the, the exit point is through solid performance figures. You know, a motel is not worth much unless it's a motel. If it's, if it's a, a, just a shell, who really wants to live in a motel? So it really comes down to your exit point and your ability in the future to cash in on this asset that is your business really comes down to its performance. So I'm hoping that these four areas of need that I see in regional hospitality will help you drive some revenue and profit into your daily, weekly, monthly, yearly results now for you to enjoy those results now, but equally position you well for a solid exit point somewhere down the track. I hope that this has been somewhat of a help to you today. I encourage you to perhaps write in the comments below if you've got any deeper questions around any of this. Happy to hear your, hear your questions. And even, you know, tell me what else is there that you're, you're looking to uncover and we might be able to cover that in some, some future content for you. All the best from us here at Hotel Rescue and we wish you well.